Here are 30 starter value tips that will help you out at all stages of the game. Planting many crops can be really tedious, but it doesn't have to be. All you need to do is hold down the interact key and walk over tilled soil. Your character will automatically plant the crops under your feet. You can take advantage of speed buffs to plant large areas really quickly using this method. It also works when placing down flooring, which is a nice added bonus. You don't actually need to aim your cursor on each and every spot. The same method is considerably more effective when harvesting crops and planting new seeds at the same time. Go from left to right and hold down the key constantly. You will harvest the crop and plant new seeds simultaneously. If you do this perfectly, time will be paused and you can harvest and replant all of your crops with almost no time passing. It's incredible. The next one is really simple but also really important. The game will only save when you sleep, so if something terrible happens like harvesting a flower around the bee house or if you accidentally place a bomb on your farm, you can reset the day and pretend like nothing ever happened. I usually do this when I die in the mines and lose a precious item. You will have to redo everything you did that day but sometimes it can be worth it. Speed grow is crucial to your short term success. You can get an extra harvest if you utilize speed grow. However, it is important to note that you can buy deluxe speed grow at a massive discount at Sandy's Oasis. She only sells the speed grow on Thursdays, but it is much cheaper when compared to Pierre's general store. Another very simple one that is of the utmost importance. As you harvest crops, you will obtain various qualities from regular to iridium quality crops. Selling crops as they are will make you tons of gold, but you will make much more if you process those crops by placing them into preserve jars or kegs. However, the quality of the crop will not affect the quality of the artisan good. So it might be a good idea to sell high quality crops and only process the lower quality crops for maximum profit. Fences look great, just look at this, it really brings the farm together. The only problem is that fences decay over time if you do not own a golden clock. Replacing fences is tedious and annoying. To avoid this, you can use processing machines and even tea saplings as fences. These will never break and will never let you down. If you do plan on using fences, don't forget that you can actually place torches on the fences like this. Befriending people in this game can take a long time, but if you give people gifts on their birthdays, it will dramatically increase their friendship points. The only issue is that you will need to be constantly looking at the wiki or running all the way to Pierre's store to see whose birthday it is. This can easily be solved by buying a calendar from Robin and placing it right next to your bed. Now you can easily see whose birthday it is and maximize those for your own personal gain. To make your life even easier, buy a statue of endless fortune from this shady guy in the casino. This statue will produce a loved gift for someone if it is their birthday. This makes getting loved gifts effortless. If it is not someone's birthday, then it will produce a random item that can be valuable. It is a win-win situation if you can afford the million gold to buy the thing. But if you want to befriend people even faster, then this is important for you. Iridium quality gifts will give a bonus to friendship points gained. To maximize this, a single iridium quality rabbit's foot given to someone on their birthday will gain a very impressive 4 hearts of friendship. This is by far the easiest way to make friends in this game and you should abuse this. Befriending people has some major benefits, like receiving incredible recipes and watching interesting cutscenes, but wait, there's more, the villagers will send you random items in the mail. However, if you received an item that you don't want, you can reset the day and the item in the mail will change. Abuse this mechanic to easily get battery packs from Pam, for example. Don't forget to double down on buffs, that's right, you can get a buff from eating food and you can also get a buff from drinking a beverage. Abuse this, spicy eel combined with coffee will make you really fast. Once you run around the valley at this speed, the game will never be the same again. Do you need a cave carrot or an artifact in the mines? Just hoe these dirt spots in the mines, then hit those spots with a pickaxe and hoe it again. This method is highly effective at getting those unique items that you can only find in the mines. The next one is very important. Fertilizers, speed grow and retaining soil are all incredibly important. They will make your farming life so much easier, but they are expensive to buy and craft. Luckily, there are ways to make them last forever. Crop 
enhancers will not disappear if there are crops on them so on the last day of summer you could plant wheat onto all of your tilled soil then in fall when you harvest the wheat your crop enhancers will survive the season change you can also do this in winter on the last day of fall place down some fiber seeds on your tilled soil this will stop the enhancers from disappearing when winter hits now do not harvest the fiber in winter wait for spring and then harvest them that way you can carry your crop enhancers over to the next year in the early game your inventory is very limited and can cause you to make some very difficult decisions luckily it's easy to solve this just place a chest and a couple furnaces on the first floor of the regular mines then after every five levels leave the mines and unload your stuff it really is that easy do you know what is frustrating hitting a bunch of rocks in the mines and then stumbling onto an existing ladder wow so much time wasted so always turn on zoom buttons in the settings menu then when you enter the mines zoom all the way out so that you can see those ladders immediately and then when you leave the mines you can zoom back in Robin will let you build farm buildings but she has other services as well. You can change the color of your buildings. You can also move your farm buildings around after you have built them. Surprisingly this includes the greenhouse and even the shipping bin. This will let your decorative creativity thrive super random but pretty helpful when donating items to the community center you can hold shift to more easily donate items a nice little quality of life feature but even better you can donate items of multiple qualities for the same bundle like the wheat requirement if you for some reason forgot to collect the rewards from completing a bundle and you completed the entire community center those rewards are gone forever or are they no you see this little bag here all of those uncollected rewards are right here and ready for you to grab you see this henchman he is blocking our way to get past him you need to feed him some delicious void mayonnaise getting void mayonnaise is pretty tough if you do not have a void chicken but you do not need to worry because you can fish in the river right next to him to get some void mayo easy never underestimate mixed seeds yes those random seeds that you get when removing weeds on your farm those seeds are actually highly valuable but not on your farm no plant these on your ginger island farm instead they can grow into pineapples and then you can harvest those pineapples and turn them into more pineapple seeds pineapples are highly profitable and regrow every seven days they are basically budget ancient fruit Getting a statue of perfection is amazing. This little statue will produce iridium more for you every single day. But what if you do not get four candles and your grandfather isn't happy with your progress? Well, you need not worry because you can easily place a diamond on his altar to cause him to re-evaluate your farm, giving you another chance at happiness. Your slingshot can be used for many different things. First, you can use it to defeat enemies by placing a rhythm or into it as ammo. You can also use the slingshot to clear rocks in the mines and from my experience, this is much more effective than a pickaxe or bombs. But you can also load up your slingshot with tomatoes and shoot the villagers. Be careful though, you will lose friendship points by doing this. Placing a chest in the middle of the town square can be really convenient for gifts and things you might need. But if someone walks into it, they will destroy it and all of its contents will be gone forever. Luckily, there is a solution. If you place a chair right next to your chest, the villager will face through them instead of destroying them. Do you have four chests holding all of your rings, boots, hats and various clothing items? Well, you do not need to do that. You see this dresser? It is not just for decoration. You can actually place any clothing item inside of these. Very convenient. Battery packs are extremely important as you need them to craft both iridium sprinklers and crystallariums. The most reliable way to get tons of these is by crafting many lightning rods and waiting for a stormy day. Then when it is a stormy day, use a rain totem on that day. This will cause the next day to also be a stormy day and you can repeat this for multiple days in a row to get tons of battery packs. Speaking of Iridium Sprinklers, you can buy one Iridium Sprinkler every single Friday from Krobus for 10,000 gold. Trust me, this is very cheap and you can very quickly get all of the sprinklers you will ever need by visiting him every single week. If you are low on cinder shards but still want to benefit from the amazing upgrades that the forge provides then you can use a diamond for now. It will apply 3 random enchantments to your weapon at the low cost of 20 cinder shards instead of 60. Want to maximize your newly buffed weapon? Well if it is a hammer then you can. During the special attack animation you can spam the regular attack to cause huge amounts of damage. This even works in the early game. A weak club can be stronger than your best sword if you use the combat method 
if you accidentally made a massive mistake with your professions like picking the tracker profession for example you can still change it all you need to do is go into the sewer and use this statue of uncertainty for the low cost of 10,000 gold you can reset your profession for a single skill however this only works if you are at level 10 in that skill Want a pretty farm but also need tons of trees with tappers and processing machines? Abuse your desert. You can place almost anything in the desert and it will work in the exact same way as if you placed it on your farm. Now if only we could place garden pots in the desert. Do you hate making mistakes? Well then this video is perfect for you. 12 things that you should never do in Stardew Valley. Subscribe for more Stardew Valley videos but for now I will see you in the next video.